Hello, my name is Mutu. I'm the CTO at Masai School. In this master class, we are going to look into how CSS affects the web pages. We are going to start with the absolute basics of styles. Then we are going to look into the CSS selectors, their priorities, and also look into how the box model affects the sizing and the placements of the elements in web pages. Welcome. In this series of HTML and CSS, we are going to look at some of the basic properties which can be used to display the web pages in a beautiful fashion. Also, we are going to learn how to make layouts, how to make much more advanced web pages using some of the most using some of the mostly uh, <coughs> used CSS properties. So as all of you might be aware, if you write an HTML or if you write anything in HTML, it shows you in a particular fashion in the web page. Let's take this example. So you wrote a heading tag and you wrote a paragraph tag. By default, each of the tags have certain default styles associated with it and that is going to determine how those things look like. But many of the cases, you want to kind of adjust or change the ways the pages look. So basically, if I'm talking about the basic appearance of any element, the two basic properties that uh, you will see frequently being used in many of the web pages is color and the background color. Now, before you get to know how to use these things, we are just going to use it with a style tag, and this is called inline CSS. So that means you are writing the styles uh, in the HTML itself. Now, if I say the color is going to be red, you can see that how this thing is reflected in the live HTML page. The same is the case in terms of uh, the HTML uh, or the heading tag. So we are going to say the color is going to look blue. Now it's going to be uh, blue in nature. But if you want to play with the background color, so let's say Now you can see how the page changed in terms of the background color. The same you can change in terms of uh, any of any of any of the element which you are trying to write. So let's say you are trying to write uh, a div element with uh, learning Maasai HTML and in this, if you want to play around. I'm just going to make it black and white. Now you can see how these things are changing the way in which they are looking. So this is a very basic of the properties which you can use to change the appearance of any of the elements. Some of the other things which you can use to change the look and feel of the text are the font size and text alignment. Let's take um, this case. This nipple is in red color. And if I want to play around with the font size, now if I say it has 40 pixels, so you can see the size or the look and feel of the font has changed. The same is the case with <laughs> the alignment. Now, by default, all the text is left align. Now, if I say text align center, now you can see that the text is going to be center align in the whole page. And the same is the case in terms of display. Let's 
चेंज दिस टेक्स साइज टू समथिंग लाइक ट्वेंटी पिक्सल्स नॉट एज बिग एज द साइज ऑफ टेंडरफुल एंड इफ आई से टेक्स्ट अलाइन right so you can see that the that the sorry this is font size and you can see this is going to be 20 pixels and the text alignment is right so that means it is going to align right so this is how you can change the look and feel of the web pages um using the basic properties of the css there are couple of more things which which will help you in terms of uh playing around with these things especially uh with the sizes of the elements so you can see in this case <coughs> the there is a particular width and height to those elements so in this case if i want to increase the height of this black box so i just have to use this property called height and you can see that the height is by i mean by by default increased to the 100 pixels which are given the same is the case in, in terms of if you want to play around with the weight of it so the top most element i'm just going to uh change the width to maybe 300 pixels so that will ensure the element is only of 300 pixels and in this i'm going to uh align the text to the center and this will ensures that in the 300 pixel this text is in the center of the page so this is how you control the basic properties to change the basic look and feel of the pages and it it can be used for most of the elements and in the next section we are going to see some more ways in which instead of you writing these all as in line how can you write them separately and you can apply them to the html uh, html elements uh, so that it becomes clean and you can quickly change them based upon your requirements in this section we are going to look at selectors how display affects each and every element and a very specific thing to html elements called box model now before going to selectors there are two kinds of elements which you need to know so the first one is the div and the second one is the span so what is the difference between a div and a span a div is a block element and a span is an inline element i'm going to explain you with examples for the system let's say you create two divs one with the content html and the second div with the content css you can see how both of them are in different lines right so that means by default if i put some background to it to showcase you so how much space the div occupies in terms of the width you can see that it occupies the whole width of the page or what are the space that is available now in terms of the span in terms of the span what happens is they occupy only the space of the content that means if the content is occupying certain space what are the space of the content so now you can see um uh, the html span element is occupying only the space of html span and the next span element will automatically be placed 
just beside it because it is occupying only certain space not the whole width of the page so this is how you can see there is a difference between a div and a span basically the div is a block element span is an inline element now why these things need to be i mean known for the next set of things uh, we'll see in in the upcoming sections but uh, typically there are multiple html elements in a page like right? let's take this example so there is an heading there's a paragraph there's a div there's a paragraph inside a div there's one more div and there is an on order list and list items so if you if i try to create the exact same layout on the page which i have shown you so and each of them looks differently on the web page by default now the problem with what we have what previously with when we are trying to write the css or the styles inside the html element is it is kind of repetitive and you need to write it multiple times for each and every element but it is not a better way of doing it there should be a much more optimized way of doing it and html provides us that optimized way of doing it or the css provides us how you can kind of select a particular set of elements and apply certain set of styles to them or you choose only one particular element and apply styles to particular those set of elements so these are certain uh, elements which i created and each one of them uh, has a different text and all and by now everything is a default style now if you want to style these elements using selectors so you wrote the html code and you write the css code separately i mean i'm using a tool called code pen where you can separately write in a separate section if you are writing in a proper html page you can write them in an external file and link that file in the head section or you write the css in the head section of that particular html code now the ways in which you can select the elements there are multiple ways the first basic way is kind of uh, selecting all the elements that means no matter uh, what are the element type it is so let's say i want to select all the elements so the symbol for that is star and this is the syntax for writing that um, code or the css code so now if i say color red you can see all the elements irrespective of the type are red in color so this is how you select all the elements and this is called a universal selector it is determined or it is used by the symbol star now in terms of elements so there are different types of elements right so there is ht uh, h1 tag uh there's a paragraph tag and 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 different set of tags now if you want to select uh now i'm just commenting out this css code so that the color becomes back to black and let's say i just want to select h1 tags that means all the h1 tag elements i want to make them green so now using this uh set of things i can make them green now what if i want to select only a particular set of tag in this case like maybe the paragraph tag so let's take i'm taking the paragraph tag i'm making the color as uh red and you can see the background color as black now you can see all the paragraph tags irrespective of if they are inside a div or outside uh, all have this kind of style change to red and uh, maybe the background color is black so this is how you can select uh, particular elements by a particular type and you can apply the respective css properties to them so in this way you, you are seeing that we are not repeating the styles anymore in the html tags 
and it's kind of better to select or multiple elements we using this uh, selectors now the next thing is when you have a particular set of elements and you want to have a custom group or a different kind of grouping for them to basically select them by those group of elements so what i'm trying to do over here is you have you have to first define the groups before you kind of um, <coughs> assign or write css for them and it is determined by the keyword called class and let's say this is the class of red now i'm going to use this class in multiple elements let's say for this paragraph maybe for this list item and maybe for this i'm i'm going to use the class of green now you can clearly see each one of i mean irrespective of the type there are different classes assigned to these elements now if you want to write css properties for these grouping of elements okay let's take let's make this h1 also have the class red so it is, it is irrespective of the tag so we can assign same classes to multiple elements and you can see now i'm going to write the css for them but if you want to write it it is the syntax is you have to write dot followed by the class name and now we can say the color of this is green now you can see uh okay and maybe i'll increase the font size so you can see uh, all the elements with the class green uh, have green color and a font size of 20 pixels the same is the case with red in the case of red okay, let me make the background color as red so now you can see uh, all the elements which has the class red the background color has been turned to red now so this is a custom grouping so you can define um, a class and it is assigned to different kinds of elements and you can kind of write these properties based upon the classes and there is one final thing one more cell kind of selector where you can select a very specific element for that you have to assign a unique identifier for that element and this is how you assign a unique identifier to that element so for this instead of class i'm going to write id is equal to like unique and this is very specific that means you cannot have multiple elements with the same id in a html page so keep this in mind when you are assigning ids to these elements and you, when you want to have certain kinds of css properties to them you can kind of assign those uh, css properties by this hash so remember for the class it's dot and for the uh, id it's going to be hash and for this unique uh, paragraph i'm going to say the font size is going to be 40 pixels and the color is going to be white but then it will not be visible now i'm going to say background color is black and text align center so now you can see i specifically selected only one particular item and kind of assign uh particular styles to those items so that is how you select uh, a particular set of uh, elements using universal selector type selector class selector or an id selector so this will let you choose or pick up the elements which you want and assign the properties any kind of css properties to them now before moving on to the next section 
I want to really emphasize one very really important point regarding that ID. So the ID value must be unique in a particular HTML page. You can't have the same ID for two elements. Although HTML will not throw an error, you are going to face issues when you are really trying to do some advanced stuff using JavaScript. Now you might have the question, okay, I have multiple ways of assigning or selecting the CSS properties for a particular element. Started with the basic styles, then you saw the selectors, various kinds of selectors, universal selector, type selector, class selector, ID selector. Now the question you might be having is what if a particular element have all kinds of things, which one takes more priority? For that, you just have to remember this. Thing. So the priority will be in the descending order of these things. So the style selector will have the highest priority, then comes ID selector, then comes class selector, then comes type selector, then comes universal selector. So let's look at what I meant by the priority. Now for that, I'm going to write a text in various things. So let's say there is a div, there's a plain text of HTML, there's a div, there's a div with class is equal to div. There's a Div with class is equal to div and id is equal to unique and finally there is a div with unique and style i'm going to fill this style in some time so i'm going to clear all the things and i'm going to show you how each of this will change when you are trying to apply different kinds of selectors. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a universal selector, which is at the bottom of the list. So that means it is applicable to all. Now you can see that in this scenario, when I say the color is red, all the HTML, all the HTML are in red color. And now I'm going to apply one more property called font size and i'm going to set font size distance per pixels so now you can see each one has a font size of the per pixels now the next priority is taken by the next selector which is the type selector now if i say div and i say the color is green now you can see because the type selector has the next highest priority, all the divs are in green color except for the element which is not a div, which is in still in red color. Now you can see there is also divs with particular class and I'm going to call them divs. Now I'm going to apply a class selector for all these things. I'm going to say the color is going to be, let's say, purple. Now you can see all the divs with these classes, even though it has a type also div, the class selectors have more priority and they are in purple color. Now, like I said, the ID can't be same. So that's why I'm going to say, unique one and unique two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a style for unique one, which I'm going to say the color is going to be orange. Now you can see irrespective of the unique one having the type selector, the class selector and the ID selector. It picks up the ID selector style because it has more priority. The same I'm trying to do with unique two. 
and you can see now unique two is also orange now for unique two i'm going to also write a style element so i'm going to say the color is going to be let's say blue now you can see irrespective of the fourth view having the type selector class selector the id selector the style which is the inline style which we looked at at the starting how to write inline styles has the highest priority so that's how the priority is determined if a particular element has different kinds of selectors associated with and for all the properties which are not common it those things will be applied low like you can see here if i say for the div i said a font size or let's say for particular divs i said a font size is going to be 32 pixels so you can see all the divs with class divs have the font size of 32 pixels so this is how the priority will take effect when you are working with multiple selectors now we'll be looking at if a particular element has multiple classes and multiple i mean those classes have multiple definitions in the css how will that impact the whole look and feel of the page so before moving forward let's look at how we can assign multiple classes to a particular element so if you want to assign multiple classes all you have to do is write the two class names with a space in between them so for the sake of simplicity i'm just going to say p1 and c2 so that means this html element this view has two classes c1 and c2 whereas the first one has one only one class which is c1 and the second one will have only one class which is c2 now when you define this thing so when you have the same selectors having multiple definitions that means you have a class selector and it, the property css properties are defined multiple times so there are two scenarios in this one you can have different properties defined multiple times or you have the same properties defined multiple times so let me take an example so here i say the c1 color is red now i'm defining c1 the background color i'm saying is black now i can see for both these html elements where there is c1 and even though these things are defined multiple times it doesn't matter so both of them will get applied so instead of defining the css properties at one place you can define at multiple places and if these are different properties all the different properties are applied to those things what if if the properties are same you are redefining the same property again and again so then in that scenario the value of the property which is at the bottom see here you can see there are two applications of colors one at the top one at the bottom the value which is at the bottom takes more priority and the element will get that value for that particular property so i suggest shift this red to bottom of green now you can see it is now in red color so this is how if for selectors you have multiple definitions of different properties and same properties the effect is going to be pretty simple for different properties all the different properties are applied to the elements for the same properties 
the value which is defined at the bottom are opposite to the elements now consider the next scenario you have multiple classes multiple definitions and the ordering so i'm going to take two examples here also so here i'm going to define the classes as c1 and c2 now you can see <laughs> all this um four these have certain kinds of tiles now in the case of multiple classes if each of the different classes have different properties all the different properties apply to the elements that means now if i write I just say the background color is black and for c2 i'm going to say the color is going to be white now you can see that for the first html element where there is only c1 the background color is black and you can't see the text and for c2 i'm wrote the color as white and you can see that you can't see the text and it doesn't even have the background for both the third and fourth views it has both the classes that is c1 and c2 that means it will both of them will have background color as black and the color as white so this is a scenario when you have different properties and when you have the same properties again here the properties values defined at the bottom are applied to the elements so what i meant by this is so let's say the c1 has a color of white or white is already there color of red so now you can see the first element which is c1 as a background color black and color red and these divs which are third and fourth will have color white because the c2 is defined at the bottom now if the c2 was defined at the top it will also realize that these html elements 3 and 4 will have the red color because they are defined at the bottom now in the case of let's take for more explanation if i say background the green now you can see that for all the c2 because it is defined at the bottom the background color turns green so this is how the multiple classes definitions and the ordering is affected one thing you should have noticed is irrespective of the ordering in the html which is the c1 and c2 or c2 or c1 the way in which these elements look is not changed so this is one other very important point which you need to note the ordering of the classes in the html doesn't matter the ordering of the classes when you are writing them in the css is the one which plays a very crucial role